What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with my full in-depth look at the final release of iOS 11, which is coming to everything you see on your screen right now, which does exclude some older devices like the iPhone 5C and the iPhone 5. Now starting with the lock screen, in order to get to the notifications on iOS 11, you swipe up. Now if you want to get to them on iOS 10, you have to swipe down from the top, which is a harder reach. So I actually like that change. We also get a new unlock effect, so when we uh, authenticate here, you can see that the screen swipes up to the top instead of just zooming out. The authentication screen is also a bit different here, so if you have Touch ID enabled to unlock the device, you'll see the Touch ID indicator on the screen as opposed to the keypad. We also lose the full screen media player on the lock screen, so instead we can also access our notifications at the same time. So bringing up the notification shade, it looks like it's been unified with the lock screen notification shade, so it behaves about the same. So when you bring it down, you can see the wallpaper as opposed to the faded background on iOS 10. The notifications are also broken down by earlier today and most recent with a bold clock toward the top along with the date and time. We can also swipe to the right to get to the widget panel, again with the bold clock toward the top along with search up top. Another small change here is that the search box is only under the widget panel, but if you swipe all the way to the left, we get another new feature unique to iOS 11, and that is quick access to the camera app. We do pick up some new swiping gestures for notifications with iOS 11. So I can swipe on iOS 11 to get to view or clear. In the case of iOS 10, I just have clear. I can also open up the app by swiping all the way to the right, which I can't do with iOS 10. In terms of visual changes, basically everything has been tweaked. We get new icons for virtually all of the Apple apps, such as the clock app with darker numbers. We also have more contrast for the calendar app. We get an all new icon for the Maps app, which now reflects the Apple Park campus. We also get some simplified icons for the Reminders and Notes app, which now have fewer lines. The camera icon loses some of its previous details, so those lines are gone. The Contacts app now reflects both genders, male and female, and the Settings app now gets a darker background. Both the iTunes Store and the App Store also get new icons, which again are much more simplified and lose the surrounding circle. The Calculator also gets a new app icon and a completely new design, so gone is the grid. Instead, we have circles. Some other visual changes include the elimination of the labels for the apps within the dock, so they've been able to shorten the dock just slightly. They've also changed up some of the icons in the status bar. So the battery icon has a more distinct border around it and the Bluetooth indicator is a bit smaller so it matches the rest of the icons. The Wi-Fi indicator has bolder bars and the cellular reception indicator is now bars instead of dots. Perhaps the biggest visual change for iOS 11 is the new control center, which has been completely redesigned and is now available from this one page, as opposed to these three pages we had to swipe across on before. Personally, I'm a big fan of this. Now I've loaded it with basically every option you can click on. So it looks a little overwhelming right now, but I'll get to that so you can customize that. In terms of the controls up top, these are the basic functions we're used to having within the control center. And when we 3D touch on them, we can expand these platters out for more controls, such as quick toggles for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, airplane mode, and more. We also have our music player, so again, bring that up here so we can play our music. We can also select different output devices, so we can select from iPhone to our AirPods if we have those connected. And if you look in the widget in the upper right corner, you'll see an indicator, and that will flash in blue if it's connected to another device, so you know where that audio is going. We also have our brightness slider in here, as well as our volume controls. If you 3D touch on the brightness slider, we also have the option to turn on our night shift mode, which used to be a separate button. If you have a number of Apple TVs within your house, we also have screen mirroring options. So this allows us to broadcast the screen to available devices. We also have our LED flash, and we can 3D touch on that to change the intensity of the flash. We can also quickly launch into the camera app, or we can also bring up quick actions by 3D touching on them, so we can take a selfie, record a video, that sort of thing. We also have our Apple TV controls, which I think is really neat here. This allows us to switch between different Apple TVs, and then we have our on-screen remote for controlling them. We also have our HomeKit widget, so we can control our individual devices, such as our LED lights. We also have a new feature here, which is Do Not Disturb While Driving, so this will turn notifications while you're driving and of course it knows that because of your GPS location and Bluetooth connectivity to your car. Another great new feature is a built-in screen recorder so as soon as you tap on it you get a three second countdown and up top you see this red status bar indicating that it's recording right now so I can go ahead and navigate through the interface and do this entire tutorial using this app if I want it uh, and then I can go up to that bar click stop and this will save it to my photo gallery I can jump right to it and play it back with audio. 
If you 3D touch on this, you have a few other options here. So you can turn the microphone on and off and start recording from this interface. We also get a quick shortcut to the notes app. So this allows us to jump right to create a new note. But if you 3D touch on that as well, you get to a few other options such as creating a new checklist, a new photo, or a new sketch. We have our voice recorder as well. So again, that just takes us right to the voice recording app. If you also 3D touch on it, you can also start a new recording right away. We can also control the text size, so we can scroll up to larger text or just go with default. So you can do this right from the control center without having to dig through settings to get to it, which is kind of nice. We get a quick shortcut to low power mode, which is nice, so you don't have to dig through the battery settings to get to that. We also have our wallet, so we have quick access to our previous transactions. And we also get a magnifying glass, so this will bring up the camera and then we can zoom in and out. Now to customize this control center, we have to go to settings control center and customize controls. It would be nice if you can do it from the control center, but this allows us to rearrange them like so or unselect them if we want to remove them. Now you can see all the ones that are unselected down below, which you can add so you're not really limited here, but you can see this list starts with the flashlight. So if you go down here, you can see all of this down below, you can customize the rest is locked in place. Now, if you have a set of AirPods and you connect them to your phone, instead of just a flat image, when you connect them, you get a 3D animation. This actually works with other Apple headphones, like the Beats headphones. We also get a tweaked app launcher along with a new animation. So as you can see, the home screen sort of pops out on iOS 10, as opposed to fading in the background on iOS 11. And of course, the home screen is no longer a separate card. So if you want to get back to the home screen, you just tap any space on either side of it. There's also a slight difference in the way the apps open up. So when you press on these apps, you can see they sort of expand out from the app borders and the background fades or zooms out on iOS 11. We also get a new selection of wallpaper. So basically everything has been replaced or changed here. And one of them is this new six colors option, which is sort of a retro theme for Apple. We also get a black wallpaper for the first time on an iPhone. Siri also gets a design update and a new voice. What's the weather like tomorrow? You'll need, You'll need an umbrella, umbrella tomorrow. tomorrow. So you can see the interface change here. So this looks a little more like Apple's widget panel as opposed to what we had before with this transparent panel. And instead of Siri's static microphone, we also get this new Siri animation. Let's go ahead and listen to the voice differences now. You'll need an umbrella tomorrow. Don't forget your raincoat. Siri can also act as a universal translator. How do you say, where is the bathroom in German? Wo ist die Toilette? They've also added some features for screenshots. So as I take a screenshot here, you can see it minimizes to the lower left corner. I can tap on this to edit the uh, image and choose whether I want to save it or not. So otherwise it won't save automatically. iOS 11 also picks up some new keyboard features. So we can select a right justified or left justified keyboard. And if you want to exit it, just tap the arrow and it goes back to full screen. This also allows us to quickly jump to keyboard settings, which wasn't available from the shortcut before. The iPad also picks up a clever new keyboard. This allows you to quickly get to the secondary character on the key just by swiping down. In terms of home kit, it does pick up the ability to add speakers. So we have a speaker API, but one of the more interesting features is the way you can add new accessories to HomeKit, which iPhone hasn't done before. So if we go to add accessory, we can actually add via a QR code or NFC. So that's really interesting because Apple hasn't used NFC before for anything beyond Apple Pay. One of the new tricks with the camera app in iOS 11 is the ability to recognize QR code. So as soon as they bring up the camera app and scan a code or just look at the code, it automatically brings up the shortcut. So in this case, it launches into an article on Safari. We also to get some more storage management options. So if we go to general and go to iPhone storage, uh, we see a breakdown of our usage on the device and we have two new features we can enable. Auto delete old conversations from iMessages. Some of those can really take up space. And then we can offload unused apps. So if we enable this, this will delete apps we're not using while retaining the information from those apps so you can quickly relaunch and reinstall them. So when it comes to Safari, it looks like the URL bar is a bit bigger with iOS 11, but really the major your differences come down to settings. So if we dig into settings and go to Safari, we'll see some significant changes here. Uh, the big changes really come down to security and privacy. And one of the features we have now is try to prevent cross site tracking. So this prevents things like Facebook from tracking your activity on other websites. We also get a few other related features here, such as asking websites not to track me. So you can turn that on and off. It's off by default, but prevent cross site tracking is on by default. So I thought that was interesting. You can also limit camera and microphone access. So that's another new feature. One of the other new features is automatically saving offline content. Uh, so if you enable this, this will automatically save all reading lists uh, from your iCloud account so you can read it later. Another 
new feature with iOS 11 is the Files app. This allows us to manage files directly on this device and within cloud accounts like iCloud Drive, Google Drive, or Dropbox, or other third-party accounts that support this. So if I go into iCloud Drive, one of the other new features I have is drag and drop. So if I go into my Photos folder here, what I can do is select one item, and then it moves around, but I can go ahead and select as many items as I want just by tapping on them. So right now I have six items. Let's go ahead and make it seven. And now I can go ahead and drag this somewhere else. So how do I do this? All I have to do is click on where you want to go, and you can go ahead and drag and drop it. So I'm just going to drag it and drop it into the desktop folder. So this will transfer the files to the desktop. The Files app within the iPad is a little more powerful than the one on the iPhone, just because we have universal drag and drop across the entire device. So I can select multiple apps or multiple documents like so, just drag and drop and select multiples. And then I can go to the home screen and drag these items right to the home screen so you can see they did not disappear like they would on the iPhone. Or I can drag it over another app, open up the app, and drop it in place. So this will download those files right into this new notes document. Many of the apps have also been updated with a more consistent look. So for example, if you go into the settings app, you can see the header is much bolder and left justified. So you'll see that in settings, the mail app, and across basically every app, like the contacts app. So again, the header is much bolder, just to make it clear where you are. If we look at some of the apps side by side, for example, if you go to the calendar, again, much bolder, more blacks instead of reds. The notes app also picks up a redesigned tool belt. And one of the new features is the option to add a spreadsheet or grid that we can modify. So you just tap on the indicators and we can add columns, delete columns, or resize them. One of the other neat features is the option to scan a document within the notes app. So if I click scan documents, this will bring up the camera and all I have to do is hover the camera over top of the document and it will automatically snap it for me. So if I take a look at the document, you can see it automatically cropped and straightened it for me. And if I want, I can retake it or click done and continue snapping the next page. And this will continue building this out until I'm done. FaceTime also gets a redesign and one of the new features is the option to take a photograph or basically a screen grab while FaceTiming. We also get a new calling sound effect. The podcast app also gets a complete redesign that looks much more like the Apple Music app. So instead of My Podcast, we have Library. Instead of Unplayed, we have Listen Now. Instead of Top Charts and Featured, we have Browse. And of course, we can also search for whatever we want. The player has also changed a bit here. So if we bring it up, you can see the player now sort of hovers over what we're doing. Instead of filling up the screen, then we can dismiss it by swiping down. The App Store also gets a complete redesign, and instead of small grids of items, we have these larger tiles which are animated to show off the game or the new app. Within updates, we pick up Pull to refresh to see if there's any new updates since we last looked at it. The App Store pages have also been redesigned with automatic video playback. We get a lot more information in one page as opposed to tabbing through the information on the previous design. And again, everything is much bolder with a clear rating. You can see the reviews down below and much more. The Messages app also picks up a slight redesign here and some new effects. So if we tap and hold here on our message and select Screen, we have some new screens to pick from, including Send with Spotlight and Celebration. Let's go ahead and send this one off and listen to it. So we get a new sound effect and a new background effect. Another change here is that we no longer pop out these controls and the digital touch features have been relegated to the apps options. So if we go to the apps here, you'll find digital touch right here. So if you want to use those tools, they're right here. Of course, we have other options down here. So all of these are apps that work with the Messages app and they sort of expand out as you scroll through them. We also get some editing options for live photo. So if I want to change the keyframe for this, all I have to do is go up to edit and I can move this cursor around until I find the exact right keyframe and make that the keyframe photo for that image. Now, if I swipe up, I can also apply different effects. So I have the loop effect, the bounce effect, and the long exposure effect. The iPad picks up most of the same changes as the iPhone. So you swipe up to get to notifications, swipe to the right to get to your widgets, and then we can go ahead, unlock, take us directly to the home screen. If we swipe up from the bottom, we get to our control center along the right side, which you can customize as well. And then we have all of our recently accessed apps. If you want to close them out, you just swipe up to dismiss them. Now, even though we don't have 3D touch on an iPad, all you have to do is long press 
to expand them out. So same functions as well. It includes the brightness slider here that gives us quick access to the night shift mode. So the big news with iOS 11 on the iPad is the dock. So this allows us to drag as many apps as we want and this automatically resizes into the dock and this is designed to improve multitasking. So for example, if I go into the notes app here and swipe up from the bottom, I can get quick access to those dock items. So I can go ahead and jump to the Safari browser or if I want, I can open up Windows side by side. So I can go ahead and drag and drop another app here such as YouTube and I get this pop-up viewer. So I can navigate through YouTube and it automatically resizes for that content. Now if I want, I can drag it to the left or right side like so, or I can just dismiss it and swipe it in again. So if you're a little too quick there. Now if I swipe down, this will pop it out into a split screen mode, which will allow me to resize the content with this bar. And you can see it does a pretty good job and it does it pretty quickly. So again, if I wanna pop out Safari, just swipe down and then I can move it around just by grabbing that bar toward the top and I can drop it in place like so or swipe to the right, swipe in again to get back to it and there you go. Along the right side of the dock, you might see this little divider. So for apps that are to the right of that divider, they're suggested apps, apps you might frequent or apps that might be relevant for your current activity. Now you can modify this under settings by going to general and under general, we have multitasking and dock. So under dock, we can turn off show suggested and recent apps. And if you do that, you can see that bar goes away. A few other features also available to iPad Pro users with Apple Pencils. They can now mark up PDFs with the Apple Pencil and sign documents that you scan in with the Notes app. And if you just tap the lock screen with the Apple Pencil, this will take you directly to the Notes app without unlocking the device. And as you sketch within the Notes app, the text will automatically resize and reposition. You can also sketch within the text of an email. Some other new features include new camera filters along with new compression technology that shrinks the size of the photo files by half without reducing quality. Apple Pay also adds the ability to send money over iMessage and the funds are stored as Apple Pay Cash, which you can use on your phone or transfer to your bank account. And lastly, the Maps app now incorporate lane guidance and indoor maps for large buildings such as shopping malls. All right, you guys, that's gonna do for me in this look at iOS 11. What I really wanna know from you guys is what is your favorite new feature? I think for me, the biggest improvement is the control center. I think that fixes a huge design issue with the previous software. All right, you guys, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know with a like, and I'll see you again in my next video.